Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a very dear friend of mine who not only is an amazing jewelry designer based in Beirut, but truly one of the most genuine souls I've ever met. His jewelry line, Rodolphe, is not only eco-friendly, but has gorgeous pieces featuring stunning gemstones, which are basically symbolizing healing and empowerment. In this episode today, we're going to be talking all about finding your purpose, overcoming insecurities, how to build an e-commerce platform, and so much more. So without further ado, please welcome my amazing friend, Ralph. Ralph, how are you? I'm doing great, Habibi. Thank you so much for having me, really. This is uh, the first one for me, and I'm really excited to share any information with you. Perfect. So, I'd love to know where your interest in jewelry came from. Well, it's actually a long journey because uh, basically I'm a civil engineer, uh, and I worked as a civil engineer with the Canadian government uh, in Canada and Montreal. So uh, yeah. it was, and I, I was, I was good in it, you know, but I was not in love with it. So I always yeah. thought that I, there's something else for me. There's something else for me. And after leaving Canada, I went through a discovery to discover what's exactly is my passion. Uh, oh. At the end, to be honest with you, I had to have some sessions with a life coach and we picked up uh, small things from every project that, that, that I wanted to do. And we picked the common points at, uh, in them. I love that. And are related to my personality, of course. And uh, with some meditation, I think the idea of jewelry came came alone by itself. And then I was so in love with it. Uh, and after that, Rodolphe yeah. was born, of course. Do you feel like there's anything in your childhood that kind of connected to this? Or it's maybe a sign that you didn't see when you were younger? Or do you feel like it kind of took you time to really tap into to jewelry? Honestly, yes, these details were like in my childhood, but I was never aware of it. Yeah, I had other projects with clothing without giving any, any details. But as, as a child, I remember I used to like this kind of clothing. I used to buy expensive ones, even though I used to use my dad's money to buy expensive ones for me. And uh, even jewelry, I remember I always used to wear something that is like different from other people. It has to be like very long necklaces or something from the back. Yeah. Later on, I realized that all these details in my childhood, like they, are, they were part of me, but I didn't know that I could, it could be my passion in life and I could be working in it. So do you feel like the life coach that you worked with really just, it changed everything for you? Well, if I want to put it simply, he made me see things that I wasn't seeing. It was there, it was clearly it was there, but he made me see it. And that's what, that. like he doesn't take, this person, the life coach doesn't take a decision for you. He just makes you see things, you know, because they are asking you question after question for you to realize what's inside of you and what's there in front of you, but you're not seeing. Especially for me, you know, when you are, when you study engineering, when you work almost 10 years in engineering, it's very hard to get out of it and say, okay, what is my passion? Like now I'm in a journey of discovering what is my passion, but I did this to discover my passion. I went through it even though I was scared because I was leaving a great job with a great salary. I'm living yeah, in, in Canada, we all know Canada, we all love Canada, of course. Yes. <laughs> uh, and leaving all my environment, my friends and everything. So it was yeah. hard to leave all this to take that decision just because I want to discover what will make me happy. That's such a bold step to do also in your life. Just the transition and taking that leap of faith to follow your path. It's, I feel like it's, it's such a risky moment. Some people go forward with it and then it changes their life and other people, I feel like just stay in their comfort zone and you really never know what's on the other end. So I'm really proud of you for taking that leap of faith and following your passion. It feels so much more fulfilling, right? Much more like, like, like easily when I used to work as an employee and, and a, and a company you have your salary so you, you feel secure every month you're getting your salary it's fine for sure when you're an entrepreneur some month you're getting a lot of money some month you're not getting anything so you go through this stress yeah. but even with this stress i am much happier now to have my own brand than be like working in, in, in an office for sure so yeah. it's it's worth That's all true. of it it's worth it. like i couldn't be doing something in my life that wasn't i wasn't feeling a big passion in it i couldn't it's we have one life yeah so i i have to live this life passionately of course i love that so you realized you wanted to start a jewelry brand how did you get started what were the first steps you took well this is where the engineer part was 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 very good i believe in every part of my life got me to this so, you know engineers are like very organized and very systematic and abc and all the list and all the stuff, <laughs> yes. all the stuff. So i wake up i have a list yes. 
Uh, everything I have to do, first start looking for a supplier, start sampling, having some samples. The designs, for now, they reflect who I am a little bit. In general, all my fashion styles, even in clothing, when I wear something, it's always um, uh, simple, but has a touch of uh, something nice, you know, but also looks, yeah. looks elegant. So you're based right now full-time in, in Lebanon, right? Yes, I also Beirut was like a place I always wanted to come back to. When I when I was raised here, I was raised in Beirut, so I was raised, raised in a boarding school. Uh, so I didn't get to live Beirut a lot. Yeah. When you're in boarding school, you can't get out a lot. When you see it from outside, you know it already. It's a very beautiful city, like it's it's paradise, you know. So after that, I had to go to Canada for studies and everything. So it stayed in my mind. And Beirut has, I think, for all Lebanese living here or abroad they have something in them always loving Beirut and, and sometimes it's a hate and love relationship but at the end you know love wins yes. of course yeah. so uh, I had to come back here and from the beginning I wanted the brand to be totally Lebanese so uh, I wanted to, to, to base it in Beirut and it's my hometown it's uh, I love this place so why not so how is your day-to-day -day when you're working on the brand is each day completely different than the next? Is it one day you're working on manufacturing? Is one day you're working on a new collection? Like, how does your day-to-day -day usually go? Yeah, every, every day is different, but it's, yeah. it's still organized. Like, I work in a very organized way. I, I can't, I, yeah, I cannot I be... Too, yeah, so which, yeah, which is sometimes creatives and, uh, you know, artists, uh, they, they, they're not organized yeah. at all. They're totally the opposite. But I, yeah. I got that from, you know, like from my... Uh, being very organized and I love it. So it's always organized. So I, I wake up and I, of course, I have time for my gym. Uh, I have to work out in the morning to, to, to feel motivated more. I do my journal, uh, I do my meditation, and then right away I do my like detox juice and then I start. Every day is different uh, and that's what's fun about it. And it's, I, th I think I've been since February in the market. Uh, since February, I'm, I'm like, fully busy all the time and I'm always now I'm doing webinars at night and some courses okay. and YouTube videos because I like I have to learn a lot of stuff because with the branding yeah. and online you have also uh, let's not forget the promotions the advertisements that you need to do and this what brings money to, to the company so all these tactics also I wanted to learn them uh, myself to, to understand everything about my brand. What do you think were your biggest challenges when you first started your brand? The first one was finding a good supplier. The idea of the brand was to have a very luxurious product that looks very luxurious and not be uh, very expensive, to be affordable for everyone. That's why I went with the products with Gold Vermeil. Gold Vermeil is actually the base of the, of the necklaces is sterling silver. It's mm -hmm. six times plated than gold plated with the 18 karat gold. So this way I make it affordable for people because necklaces with gemstones, you know, I'm using gemstones. So necklaces with gemstones and solid gold, you, you, you can go from like, let's say the, the minimum $800 and you can go up to 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 even. Depends on the stones. Yeah. So I wanted to make that yeah. affordable for people. And I didn't want to have a gold plated, which, you know, fades in a very fast or some people are sensitive to it. So that's why I went with the gold vermeil, which is, a medium quality of both and it was hard to find a supplier i feel like that's the it's biggest fun. thing usually it takes that's it's all trial and error that's the, the biggest thing because when you have yeah. a good product you have a good start so since yeah. gemstones really is like the focal point of a lot of your pieces what's your relationship with gemstones what got you you know inspired to make it the focal point of your brand when i first decided that i wanted to go into jewelry i traveled a lot to to a lot of countries really like uh, london paris uh, barcelona new york like Miami all these places and not only traveling and visiting them either I've, I've been to every city like so many times or I've lived there like at least four or five months in each the city has its own energy and it's the feeling that you get when you go to Paris or when you go to Montreal or, or other places and of course Beirut has had the best impact in me and when I came back to Beirut I felt that the identity I knew about Beirut was fading a little bit. The energy that was in the city was fading because after the explosion of the port and everything, the energy in the city wasn't that nice, you know? Yeah, so, uh, exactly. And I know that gemstones, you know, many, every country has one or different or few gemstones that is related to this country. So like Brazil, for example, you have the aquamarine that comes, uh, comes from Brazil, you know, ruby, it comes more from India. So, and they say that the gemstone 
it's scientific, scientific of course, it absorbs all the energy that goes around it. So whatever energy is happening around the gemstone, whatever you find it, it's, it's taking the energy uh, of the place. Yeah. So yeah. this is the idea that comes from, I wanted to keep the energies, like if I'm wearing the gemstone of Beirut, I'm keeping the energy of Beirut next to me. Another person who's wearing it's it. So just, that's what I'm trying to do, is keep the energy of the city around your neck the whole time. Why don't you walk us through your name, how you, how you found the name Radolf? What inspired the name? What's the story behind it? When I start, you know, when you start looking for a name, it's, it's, it's not an easy process also. It takes time, you know? Yeah. And um, we as Lebanese, we, we are proud in any way or another. We are always proud of, of who we are and stuff. So I wanted to come up yeah. with something a little bit different. So I did some history online. And I found okay. that uh, there were like uh, names that used to be to exist before we come up with the name Ralph. And one of them was Radolf. The origin of my name is the origin of the name Ralph. For me, it sounded a little bit like uh, German and sexy. And <laughs> so I was like, this is it. I'm using it. Playing with words always is so tough because you just go back and forth trying to figure out what sounds the best, what feels the best. How's everything been with social media? Do you feel like it's really helped push your audience, help grow your market? Uh, most of them, they, they are coming from social media because I'm promoting mo mostly on social media. If you think okay. about it, I thought about it, uh, I, th I think last week. You know, before yeah. before we had those social media, imagine if you want to open a brand before you have social media, you only have to do it in your in, in your in your country and you have to do it, you have to put it in a store. So social media yeah. really opened like you are in front of millions and millions of possible customers and leads to get to, to yeah. your brand. That's amazing for an e-commerce. That's why e-commerce now is really good and after Corona and everything. It's amazing, definitely. like you connect in one advertisement. I think that's the good thing about social media. It definitely keeps yeah. us really connected, but you can access so many cool brands through Instagram. Like for myself as a stylist, I find a lot of my brands, like new brands I want to discover through Instagram, through whether it's like an influencer tagged a brand that I never thought of, or just all the ads and the sponsored ads you see on Instagram. There's just so much content being thrown in your face that it's like you discover so yeah. much. and. That's honestly my biggest tool. How's your relationship with social media? Do you feel like you're on it more than you want to be? Or do you feel like you have an easy relationship where you're on it sometimes, but not too much? Sometimes throughout the day, you find yourself on it and you'll be like just for 10 minutes and then you're on it for like an hour. You know, you don't even realize you're just like, it becomes a black hole. Well, what happened with me actually, you know, like I have my own personal uh, Instagram before, of course, opening my, my page and my personal got yeah. also uh, like kind of nice amount of, uh, of followers. Uh, and I was active on it most of the time, posting day as they know, whatever uh, stories, most of the time, every day almost. It was good. It yeah. was nice. But, you know, we change when we mature. With time, I found that I became more private about my life. Yeah. I found joy in being private. Like, I don't like to share everything that I do every second. On my personal social media, I am becoming less, much less active. I think it's also because nowadays, everything's so easy to access. Like, you just, you have so much access to people's life. You see so much that it's kind of like, I'm the same way where I feel like I have days where I'll show on social media, but then other days where I'm like, I don't really feel like it and it's kind of like live your life you don't need to post everything that's how i feel and i'm trying to limit it as much as possible but at the same time for the yeah. business i have to be active i, I have to be I active then sometimes it's like yeah. i don't want to be online now i don't want to be thinking about posting anything i just want to like enjoy <laughs> now social media and phones and always selfies and stuff it's it gets you out of the the, the present moment honestly i yeah. say for myself like if I didn't have to, I probably wouldn't have Instagram. It would just feel so much, so much relief, so much better. And it's like, now I prefer someone to just call me or text me versus like DMing me or something, you know? It's just like those little things, I just, I prefer them so much more now. If you want to start your own e-commerce website, what do you feel like are three tips or three steps that you should have in mind when trying to build one? For me, I, the first thing I thought about it, of, of course, I'm going to come up with the design of the website, how I want the, the website to look like, because we have so many designs. Yeah. I would always yeah. suggest to go with a simple one, like l keep it simple. Let people, when they, they, they yeah. are looking at your website, uh, for them, easy to choose, easy, not, not too much stuff. And the speed of the, the website should be fast also, so you cannot add a lot of videos and stuff. So the design, yeah. keep it simple. And of course, finding a good web developer, find a good one who can apply your design 
and go with simple stuff. There's like, now they can do a website that is basic, it's known, it's a template already done. So go yeah. with templates that they, they exist already, just be online. The more simple you make it, the better it is. This is my, my opinion. How is your creative process? Like how do you find inspiration when you are designing a new collection? I, I do a lot of research. A lot of research about okay. what, what, what's in the market right now and what, what used yeah. to be in the market. What I try yeah. to do, if I want to explain, like my brand targets men more than women. It tar it's unisex, like everybody can wear it, of course. But uh, yeah. gemstones, women wear gemstones and complicated necklaces with gemstones way yeah. long time before, you know? So uh, sure. I wanted to introduce, it, to introduce it for men. In Brazil, they already, men, they already wear gemstones. But in Europe, they just started and in the Middle East, they don't. It's something new for men. So in general, what I'm trying to do is to take something what maybe is a little bit feminine and introduce, introduce it for men. That's why I had one of my first pieces, two of my first pieces, I had chokers, but chokers for men. And when I advertised it, I put a masculine, uh, let's say fit person with a nice body wearing the choker and it goes to his neck like this. And actually it's one of the most selling uh, pieces I have because people wow. loved it. Men loved it, loved the idea, but usually chokers are for women. Very tight. I don't. feel like, yeah, I feel like it's very rare to see a lot of men wearing a lot of accessories. I feel like you don't see it often. There's probably a few guys here and there you'll see maybe put on some bracelets, maybe a necklace, but I think it's definitely an untapped market that really needs more light being shown on it. So I feel like you're really hitting it right on the head where it's it's a market That's that really needs saying. to be yeah it really needs to have some more light on so i love that can you walk me through the process of how it usually happens so you design a collection come up with the idea talk to your manufacturers how does it go from you know from the idea all the way to the actual product what are the steps that usually happens in between them? well i start drawing them i draw all the all the the items the necklaces the bracelets with the measurements uh, everything about it the kind of gemstones, uh, thickness of the of the of the chain, length of the chain, everything. Even like this one is square, so the dimensions of the square, the depth, and everything. So I do the designs. Yeah. I send it to them. They draw it on AutoCAD. Of course, I know how to draw on AutoCAD since uh, I learned it for engineering, but I don't like it. So I let them do it. They draw it on yeah. AutoCAD, and I correct it, uh, and they do the sample for me. They send me the sample. I check it. If everything is fine, then it's fine. I just order my quantity. If there's some modifications to do, then uh, I will ask them to do the modification. And this is how it goes. Does it take you a few months or like a few weeks to really kind of form a new collection? Like how long do you think it takes overall to really come up with the creative process and, and design it? That takes time. That takes time. Like because uh, you know how like creatives are like if it, the idea is not coming now, you just leave it and you go and you do you do your stuff in your uh, during your day and you come back and then the idea maybe it will come like the bracelet. Of sure. course, I wanted to use a gemstone in, in the bracelet and I wanted the bracelet to look totally unisex. The bracelets with gemstones usually, I think personally, most of them they look feminine, but I, I wanted to, to make it a little bit unisex and masculine. So that's why it took me a while to come up with a design that doesn't exist in the market. And honestly, yeah. I put it now just um, pre-order. I'm getting them uh, very soon, like in, in a week or two max. And I'm already almost sold out with this bracelet. People, when they are seeing it, they, they are loving it. That's awesome. Oh my gosh, that's so exciting. How has it been, you know, working in Lebanon, you know, after the explosion, do you feel like it affected, you know, the e-commerce work for you or it, put you a little bit back in some places or do you feel like even with all the challenges that happened you were still able to overcome them and you know still put your feet on the ground and get going well this is my purpose i always will try to do what you said right now i will, like even whatever is going on outside i try to stay in my bubble uh, protect my energy in a way yeah. and keep focused on Thank my you. brand whatever is happening first of all being online and selling online, even though whatever is happening in different countries, let's say Ukraine now, like what's, it's very sad what's happening, but I cannot deliver to Ukraine, you know, but the online opens, the e-commerce opens all the other countries to you. So you always try to promote in different, different countries. So even if Lebanon sometimes is not going well, people 
are not able to 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 buy stuff because the situation the financial situation is not that good so i promote outside you don't see yourself ever relocating outside of beirut do you do you see yourself there for a while long term for now yes yeah for now. but i what i love about the the business is that i can take all my stuff now you know i can go let's say live in barcelona for five months in madrid yeah. Whatever, do my business from there. I can do it from anywhere now. So that's what I'm aiming for in the future. Yeah, you could really whatever. go anywhere. Do my business from there. I can do it from anywhere now. Because the biggest passion of all, I think for me, is living in many cities. I love like living in Spain and see the food, taste the food and hear the language and going to all the places in, in Spain then going to Italy and doing yeah. the same stuff and living as, as you are Spanish or as you are Italian not only visiting it's nice to experience the culture and really just you know throw yourself into and experience everything well this is this is life like we are one planet we are all one and I don't want to be stuck yeah. in one place my whole life and I've traveled a lot but I think I in the future know. also I want to keep doing that so I'm I had this business so I would be able to do that even even uh, later on. But for now, of course, you know, the business at the beginning, first two, three, four, maybe five years, you have to be on top of it the whole time. So for now, I'm in Beirut yeah. and I'm loving Beirut and it's an amazing place. Yeah. I'd love if you could describe the perfect outfit with your jewelry. Since we have different colors of jewelry, uh, ruby, citrine, yeah. aquamarine, blue topaz, London blue topaz, Swiss blue topaz, a lot of black onyx we have a lot so it goes with almost everything but for me because it's the jewel yeah. so when you're wearing it i prefer that it's something without a lot of big names or big uh, brand names or stuff no it has to be something yeah. simple one color so the stone will take it, it, its place on you you yeah. know that's that's what i suggest for. so what advice would you give to someone who wants to start their own jewelry brand or someone who is getting into the e-commerce world what would be some advice you would give them most of the things in life they seem to be hard to do like if i'm here at point zero and i'm thinking i want to have my brand and i'm thinking okay i have to have my website i have to have this and i have to find a web developer and i have to have supplier and products and be good it's overwhelming yeah, you're gonna overwhelm yourself for sure i was stressing a lot because i went through a lot of to, to find my passion and everything so when i stopped engineering and i went from a project to a project to a project at some point i wanted to be a dj at another point another thing so i went through a lot of things yeah. and yeah. because i was stressing a little bit inside of me of what I wanted and I like the stress was like I need to find my passion now you know and I came yeah. I came across this video online and they were saying that the average age of a person discovering his real purpose in life and living his purpose is 38 years old that is crazy <laughs> yes and at that time I was like no I was like maybe yeah because it took me one year to do the brand so I was maybe 36 okay wow when I saw this, even this small information, imagine, even this small information, I said to myself, you know what, okay, I have a couple of years. Yeah. So when I calmed yeah. down and I wasn't stressed, everything became easy. So when you want to start a new brand, don't overwhelm yourself with everything that you have to do. Come up with the list, the big list, first of all, the big list, which is the big ideas, website, uh, product, uh, stuff like this, uh, the delivering in, in your own country, locally or internationally, you know? So come up with the big ideas and under every big idea, come up with the small steps that you have to do to get to this point. Everything will look easier and simpler and you're gonna have a lot of struggles to, to find a good web developer or, or other stuff. You're gonna have a lot of struggle, but it's okay. Yeah. No, you don't have to figure out everything and you can learn everything online. You can go on YouTube and learn whatever you want. <laughs> You can go on Google and even, I don't know jewelry, like I'm a civil engineer, you know, I, I can say I know in fashion, I can say I love fashion, I've loved fashion since I was a kid, I can say that, I discovered that, now I'm aware that when I was a kid, I, I, I used to love it a lot, but um, I don't know about jewelry, I learned, it took me one year to come up with the brand, to do everything is related to, to the brand, to launch it. So I learned everything. But you can do everything you want. You can do it. You can learn it by yourself. That is such a good point, honestly. I feel like it's so easy just to get overwhelmed with anything, you know, where you want to be at in life. And I love that advice that you just said because it's so true. It's really about figuring out what you can do right now. Think about that list. Think about how you can execute it, what you need to do to get there. It's just about, you know, breaking it down, 
starting off with one little thing yes. and going from there because you can get overwhelmed so easily, especially with social media too. Sometimes you feel like you should be much more ahead and, and, and you're not, and you just kind of get insecure at times. It's just, there's so much information going on and, and it's easy just to get lost in life, but you just got to keep your head yes. on right and, and just stay focused exactly. on what is important to you. So I'd love to know more about your design process because I know each one of your products has a very unique design to it, something on the front and then something on the back. Can you walk the viewers through that design process and what it means to you? Uh, yeah, well, actually every, uh, if I can show it a little bit, maybe every necklace has two, two gemstones, one in the front and one on the neck. And you, you can move the gemstone, you can put That'd them next to each other or not. But the idea was, it's this gemstone, the one behind, on the back, on the neck, it's actually, since it takes the energy, so it's actually connected to your mind. And this one here in the front, is, it's connected to your heart. So it's about to, yeah. to, to have the connection, the link between the mind and the heart, because it's the balance between the mind and the heart and every decision that we have to make in life and everything we go through. That's so powerful. I love that. The people, for the question that you asked me before, what my advice is if people want to start their own brand, Meditation is going to help a lot. You're going to feel peace all the time. So you, you can do every task in a peaceful way. And most importantly, if you look for it, it's going to, meditation is going to give you a lot of ideas, a lot of designs. Yeah, you're going to see it in front of you, you know, and you're going to be sure, okay, this is it. You wake up from the meditation and say, I have it. I have it. You go and you draw it right away, you know. So uh, meditation is a big part. Well, at the end of every episode, I have a rapid fire question where I basically ask three questions and you think of whatever comes to mind. And if you can answer it in one word, it would be great. And if not, just in one sentence. Okay, so the first one is, what would you say is your biggest accomplishment? Uh, finding my purpose. I love that. That is so good. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Everything is about love. What do you feel your purpose is? I'm still in the process. I love that. Well, those are all the rapid fire questions. <laughs> I wanted more. So I wanted more. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Ralph. I adore you. Thanks. You know that. I really appreciate it. I had such a fun time talking to you. Thank you so much. And really thank you for having me. I was, I was so happy when you okay. proposed this to me. And I was excited until today. And thank you so much, Habibti. And I can't wait to see you of course. face to face. I know. Same. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.